good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session <clears throat> we had been discussing ophthalmology for quite a long time for the past 10 days we have already discussed glaucoma cataract the various kinds of visual field defects pupillary abnormalities optic neuritis and uh, tricky topics like strabismus amblyopia etc etc we are left with the penultimate part of the ophthalmology which is another 20 to 25 percent ophthalmology which is left over so with the fresh spirit we'll be finishing in the next four days whatever that is left over and then we will be making the great start of anatomy which is another very interesting and challenging subject both at mbbs level and also for md entrance so we invite our online students from jabalpur tejo sudha femida shahila rohit kavi and the students in tirupati guntur visakhapatnam and i am very happy today we have uh, a huge gathering of students from rims kadapa is also in the audience and uh, if a student from usmania medical college after attending us happens to get uh, in the top 10 ranks it is only one star adding to me but if a student from rims kadapa happens to stand in the top 10 ranks or a student in anandapur happens to stand in the top 10 it is another five stars adding up to me so thanks to the technology <clears throat> so let us make the great start collegion internal and external hodiolum this is the main part of our discussion what is external hodiolum doctor it's that acute suppurative inflammation of the gland of the gis or mole is basically called as the external hodiolum typically in the young children and young adults who have the habit of rubbing their eyelids the incidence of the collagen is quite high similarly if somebody has a refractive error for example hypermetropia in hypermetropia we need to use excessive amount of accommodation at a point of time the patient will be developing asthenopic symptoms and uh, to overcome the asthenopic symptom he will be rubbing his eyelids so that is the reason recurrent stries is an important problem in the patients who are having uh, the hypermetropia is what need to be remembered <clears throat> please punch in the chat window whether uh, you are able to get the voice clearly or not that gives me a little assurance i hope the voice is clear <clears throat> clear and loud now some metabolic factors like chronic debility any alcohol consumption etc etc are responsible now comes an important question in entrance what is the most common organism leading to the development of the sty what is your confident answer don't let streptococcus come to your mind it is only staphylococcus which you need to basically remember so typically it presents like a painless swelling in the eyelid and uh, since it is occupying eyelid the eyelid feels very heavy and it is a small firm hard non tender swelling along the lid margin is the presenting feature so if you look at the conjunctival side typically a hodiolum will be pointing towards the conjunctival side if you ever the eyelid now what are the important uh, complications because of uh, external hodiolum if it is very large on the upper eyelid then it can make a pressure on the cornea and ultimately cornea can develop irregularities and astigmatism can be a consequence because of the external hodiolum 
Suppose if it is on the lower eyelid, then it can drag the lower eyelid down and epiphora, continuous tears, can be an issue. And it can also lead to ectropion on long run is another important complication. Ultimately, if external hardiolum gets secondarily infected, <coughs> then uh, you call it as hardiolum internum. Then calcification can occur. A very frequently asked MCQ in the entrance is, in an elderly person who is having external hardiolum, what is the most important thing that you need to suspect? Typically, it can undergo a malignant transformation, especially in the elderly people. It can lead to meibomian gland carcinoma, can be a consequence of the external hardiolum, is what need to be remembered. So, how do you treat doctor? We basically give heart compressions, and whenever the pus point is formed, then uh, it can be evacuated by doing epilation of the uh, uh, cilia, which is, is uh, very close to. Then you can uh, rarely you require a surgical incision to drain it, and we put the antibiotic eyedrops, anti-inflammatory, systemic antibiotics, etc., etc., and. Uh, if there are recurring styles, recurrently if the person is developing, then you need to correct the, what is the predisposing condition, why recurrent styles? Either there is a diabetes or any debilitating state or it could be a elderly people may, meibomian carcinoma need to be suspected and uh, in the case of uh, the children, hypermetropia should always be identified and it need to get corrected. So that's all the story that you need to know about External hodiolum destroy. Now, Dr. Kalegion, what is this? It is also another relative of mebomian gland only. It leads to mebomian cyst is called Kalegion. A chronic non-infective granulomatous inflammation of the mebomian gland ultimately leads to the development of the cystic degeneration, which is then called as Kalegion, is what you have to basically remember. So this is the normal mebomian gland doctor and whenever there is a development of Kalegion, typically it leads to this kind of a transformation. So how do you want to treat a Kalegion? We do a conservative management, heart fermentation, antibiotic drops, anti-inflammatory drugs. Intralesionally, you can be able to inject Priamcinolone, the steroid, then you can do incision and curate touch and suppose if it is occurring along the margins of the eyelids a marginal collagion then you can be able to treat it with diathermy is considered to be the management of choice then comes the next important issue in the exam internal hardiolum what is this what is the difference between collagion and internal hardiolum collagion is a non superative inflammation Whereas a superative inflammation of the bimobian gland, which is because of a blockage in the duct, you basically call it as the internal hardiolum. Once more, it is the staphylococcus, which is the most important organism, primarily can directly infect it, or even a external hardiolum can become super infected secondarily, and that can lead to the development of uh, the internal hardiolum is what need to be remembered. External hardiolum is painless, but after getting infected, internal hardiolum is painful. And in fact, a very intense pain will be there. And uh, how do you differentiate internal hardiolum from that of a external hardiolum fundamentally? If you take internal hardiolum, if you look at the point of maximum tenderness and swelling, it is always away from the lid margin. Whereas, and uh, if you look at the pus, in case of internal hardiolum, it usually points towards the tarsal conjunctiva, not onto the root of the cilia, as what happens with external hardiolum, which is the differentiating factor. So you need to do a vertical incision and need to drain because after all it is a pus. So that's all the story that you need to know about internal hardiolum. So summarize doctor, 
mainly you must know meibomian gland and you must know the chance of meibomian carcinoma i am telling you the buzzwords which you need to remember ultimately for entrance exam or even for writing a little story in the university exam paper then you must know it is staphylococcus not streptococcus so these four to five points are very important to be remembered